Welcome to Stuff They Didn't Teach Me in Sunday School. I am sure that you all pray. When I pray, I have a habit of doing something that, that I probably ought not to do. I feel like I have to give God instructions. I will pray about a particular set of circumstances and then I will say, now here are some ideas as to how you might fix this. That's almost blasphemous. I think God can handle it without my suggestions. And you know what, when he does answer my prayer, most often he doesn't do it anyway. I assumed he was going to do it anyway. He does it his way. Today's Stuff They Didn't Teach Me in Sunday School session deals with a time when God did it his way. You need to go to 2 Kings chapter 6 and 7. Last time we were introduced to Naaman, the Syrian general, we're still going to be dealing with the Syrians, although Naaman's out of the picture now. The Syrians and Israelites, the northern kingdom, don't get along that well most of their history. And it seems that in Syria, they had been getting word that whatever happened in the king's house had gotten back to the king's house in Israel because Elisha, with God's power, was relaying the plans and the, the attack plans of the nation of Syria. And so they locate Elisha, the prophet, in the city of Dothan, and they, the, the Syrian army attacks the city of Dothan. Elisha's servant is upset. The city is surrounded by the Syrian army. It looks like Elisha's going to die. It looks like the city's going to fall. It looks like the servant's going to die. It looks like Syria's going to overcome. In verse 15 of 2 Kings 6, when the servant of the man of God rose early in the morning and went out, behold, an army with horses and chariots was round about the city. And the servant said, Alas, my master, what shall we do? And he, Elisha, said, Fear not, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And then Elisha prays and says, Open his eyes that he can see. So God opened the eyes of the servant, and he looked at the mountains, and he saw a mountain full of horses and chariots with fire. He saw God's army. The term that is used for God's army throughout the Bible is the heavenly host. The heavenly host is not the host at a dinner party. The heavenly host is an is a, is a army arrayed for battle. Some of you may have grown up with, the old, with a communion liturgy that, had, liturgy that had the phrase in it, holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth. It's not Lord God of Sabbath. It's Lord God of Sabaoth. And Sabaoth is the heavenly hosts. Lord God of the army. Lord God of the hosts. And then you get the Christmas story. And there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts. The heavenly army. We always picture a choir. That's not what it's talking about. It's talking about an army. And so here, as God opens this guy's eyes, he looks at the hills and he sees... God's army surrounding the Syrian army. God delivers this city in, a, in an interesting way. He strikes the Syrian army with blindness. Elisha goes out to the blind army and says, here, I'll show you the way. And he shows them right back into the city walls, the Syrian army. They are now captured. He sits them down. He feeds them a banquet and he sends them home. Had that been my prayer, I don't think I would have prayed for that kind of deliverance, but that's what God brought about, a miraculous deliverance from the Syrian army for the city of Dothan. The story that follows that, and also in 2 Kings, starts at chapter 24, is a story uh, when, the Assyrian, when, when the Syrian army, or Aramean army, came back again under Ben-Hadad the king, surrounded this time the city of Samaria, and we're ready to starve them out. Many times, um, ancient battles were won without firing an arrow or a shot or anything out of a catapult. They just surrounded the city and waited for the people to starve to death. 
Things got so bad, we're told in verse 25, there was a great famine in Samaria, where well, there's a famine because the Syrian, Syrian army surrounding the city as they besieged it until an ass's head was sold for 80 shekels of silver and the fourth part of a cob of dove's dung for five shekels of silver. Think about that a minute. We're talking a meal here. A donkey's head is selling for 40 bucks. Next time you go buy a donkey, look at that head and see how much you want to eat off of that. To make matters worse, a fourth of a, basically a half a pint of dove manure was sold for about $2.50. Now there's nothing I want to eat in a half a pint of dove's manure. But when things get that bad, you eat what's available. It was so bad that two women came to the king in those circumstances, we're told. And one of the women said, I need you to decide between us. The two of us agreed that yesterday we would eat my son. And tomorrow we would eat her son. We ate my son, but she's hidden her son. I'm going to assume that both boys were already dead. But the idea that an army surrounding a city in a siege brings people down to human cannibalism is a reality. Elisha comes in this circumstance, and, and in this circumstance he says to the city, Tomorrow, about this time, a measure of fine meal shall be sold for a shekel, so a whole bushel of, of meal for about 50 cents, and two measures of barley for a shekel, two bushels of barley for 50 cents, at the gate of Samaria. And the captain of the king said, that's never going to happen. Don't believe it. And Elisha says to him, you'll see it, but you won't eat it. You'll see it, but you will not be part of it. Well, that, that day, there were two lepers that sat at the city gate. And they're starving along with everybody else. And one leper looks at the other one and says, in effect, what can be worse? Let's just go out there to the Syrian army and see if they'll feed us. We're lepers, we're going to die of leprosy, we're going to die of starvation here in the city. If we go out there and they kill us, what have we lost? It's the same difference. So these two lepers walk out of the city and walk up to the camp of the Syrian army and they find it totally empty because the Syrian army had heard the sound of chariots and the sound of horses and they'd taken off. And these two lepers find all this food. They'd had no food for, for days. They sit down and they start pigging out in this Syrian camp and then they look at each other and they go, wait a minute, there's a whole city back there starving to death and we're feasting. Let's go back and tell them. So they went back and told the city, the city, the gates flung open, the people came pouring out of the gates, and they trampled the captain of the guard to death, the one who had said he didn't believe it would ever happen. Two deliverances that God brings about in this nation, two deliverances that God brings about for his people. Miraculous, unusual ways to deliver people. But isn't really that what he does isn't that what he does through the cross as well? A miraculous, unique way of delivering his people for all time, for eternity.